Now that we have a 2D composite working, we can add in our 3D garbage mat. Recall that we have the 3D mat that represents the garbage mat in a different scene in our Blender render file. So we'll switch back to layout to check how it aligns. And remember to click the real-time foreground mode to yes in the compositor to re-enable the viewport compositor if you haven't done so already. Go in here, okay, so that's real-time, great. If you suddenly start seeing purple frames, you can shift F3 in the bottom panel to bring up the, uh, the shader editor and click on the camera image plane, and then that should bring things back to normal. So let's bring our garbage mat back into the original scene to do some more editing on it. We're gonna go to our garbage mat, and here's our mat. Hit Control C, and then switch back to our main scene. Control V, paste it. There we go. We're going to clear the background scene to make things easier to see. So we'll go to our, our scene tab and clear our background scene. So we just see the garbage mat again. So now you can scroll back and forth through the timeline to see exactly how large the garbage mat needs to be to cover the actor. You don't want to key any more green area than you have to. So we're going to uh, reshape our 3D garbage mat to minimize how much area we need to key. So we'll move to near the end of the timeline. Um, there we go. And this is as high as his head gets in the scene. So I'm going to select the psych mat tab to move to edit mode, middle mouse button, drag around. Press 2 to select edges, click the top edge, numpad 0 to come back, and then we can do GZ, and we can drag down the top of the garbage mat to just barely cover his head. So we can scroll back and forth, make sure he's covered correctly through the whole range. And we're making sure that our viewport uh, is matched to our compositor size here. So if you, if you have it mismatched, it's not going to line up correctly. So make sure the edges of the rendered viewport are matching the edges of your viewport compositor. Now we see that the left mat extends too far. We're still in edit mode, so we can double click on the left edge of the garbage mat object, double click here. We can hit GX and we can scale that in. So let's see how far we need to go. We're going to scroll up through the timeline to see exactly how much of that we need. And hey, that's right. That's good. That's exactly how much we need. We want to shape the floor a little bit. We're still in edit mode. Click on an edge, hit control R to add a loop. Click in here, and then we can move up and down to drag where the loop is. So say we want to move it up here, click to set. Now we want to move this edge, this point in. So middle mouse button, click and drag. Select one, pick points, pick the point. Numpad zero, come back into frame, and then GX, and we can bring in that point. And let's see where we want to bring it into. We'll just move forward, make sure that we've got enough mat to cover him. It's a garbage mat, so it doesn't have to be exact. There we go, enough mat to cover him. And we're going to want to do that with the right-hand side. So once again, middle mouse button, click and drag, pick a point, numpad zero to come back in, GX to bring that back in. And let's move through the range to see, see how that's going. All right. So we have a, a complete shot. And there's, there's some elbow overlap here that we're gonna correct in a different tutorial. There we go. Now we want to add in an edge loop to clear the equipment here. So we'll, we'll come back here and we can see that there's, see over here, we have some equipment here that we want to want to correct. So we're going to add in another edge loop. We're still in edit mode. Again, just going to click on that edge, click control R, click to place. And I'm going to scroll up and down here. Let's pick out our edge loops here. Since we have one selected, we can grab this point, shift, grab this point, GX, and we can move those in. And then we can clear those objects. So let's scroll back and forth to see if we've cleared all of our unwanted objects. There we go. Oh, 3D mats. <laughs> there we go. Right. And we can clear this one too. Uh, press two, pick edge, control R, uh, add a loop this down, click one, grab the point, GX, move it in, and we can clear our, that little tripod. Let's make sure we didn't mess up where his elbow has to be. Oh, very close, very close. Okay, that's pretty good. And sometimes you'll actually have an elbow overlap that we can correct later with an AI mat, uh, but this is okay for now. 3D garbage mats are really nice to deal with tracking shots. 
Okay, once we're done, we're going to hit tab to exit edit mode. And if you run into purple frames anywhere in here, just remember hit shift F3 to cycle back into your shader editor, click on the camera plane and move back and forth. And that should correct that. It's just a quirk. We're out of edit mode. Click on the psych mat object, control C to copy, switch to our garbage mat scene, control V to paste. So now you see we've got two psych objects in here, uh, the original and the modified one. So we're going to right click, make a new collection, call that stage mat. And we're going to put the original one into that. Hit M, stage mat, and we're going to disable that so that we only see our new modified one. So you can see that it's the modified one if we move forward in time to the same spot. We want to save that original unedited object in case we have other shots done with the same coordinate system on the same stage. We can append that object or that collection to our new shot and save ourselves a lot of work because then our nice 3D garbage mat will just show up and track perfectly. So let's go back to our original scene and we'll delete the psych mat 2 object. Don't need that anymore. And we can swap in our garbage mat scene into the background to check to make sure everything came through correctly. So we'll go to the background scene Click garbage mat, and there's our mat, our garbage mat tracking correctly. Great. Okay, so let's change back to our, our normal background scene. We're going to go up to our compositing tab, and we're going to go down and click auto shot and uh, ungroup that. In case we haven't already done that before, grab our render layers, move it over, over into a clear area. And we're going to need to add another set of render layers to the scene in order to see the garbage mat layer. So we can go ahead, zoom in our render layers, select that, shift D to duplicate it, move that above our existing camera originals. And we're going to come in and change our scene to the garbage mat scene. Control shift left mouse button and make a viewer node. And you'll notice that we're not seeing anything in our viewer node. And that's because we haven't rendered a frame. So we'll go ahead and render a frame. And now you can see that our viewer node lets us see the garbage mat render from that particular frame. Now, of course, this is inverse to what we want. We want the garbage mat to block out the area uh, of the stage, not the area of the actor. So we're going to go ahead and add an invert node, link it in there. Now we can see that we've inverted the mat. Now we're gonna move our node down here a bit so we can see it more easily. We'll move it into the post keyer group for now. And we're going to link our output into our garbage mat of our keyer node, and then shift our viewer to our keyer node. And then we can see that the stage has now disappeared from the keyer output. We have successfully garbage matted out the stage. And double check to make sure our keyer live switch is off the way it should be. And we can click forward frame by frame with the right or left arrow to make sure the garbage mat is working through the range of motion of the frames. We can go over here, right click and do a horizontal split, and then do a shift F12 to get our timeline. Highlight our camera, and then we can see where our timeline keyframes are for the beginning and ending of our frames. So we can move to the first frame with a shift left arrow, and we can see the very beginning of the shot. And then we can move throughout the shot and see the frame update. This is a good way to, to make sure that our garbage mat is working through the scene and giving us the key we want. Also double check and make sure that our keying color is set correctly. There we go, that gives us some better keyer results. And we can move through the timeline and check throughout the range of, of frames to see that it's working well. And there are a few extra objects in here that we can clear out on another tutorial. So we can go ahead and render a, a single frame out to make sure the whole composite is working. We'll go into more details in compositing, but we're going to wrap this up and we'll package it up to get ready to send to an external render farm.